Hey folks, John Notstein here. I'm joined by Lena with Promethean and we're gonna go over the very initial setup when you walk in day one of your new active panel. Very first thing you're gonna see is three accounts. You're gonna see an IT admin account, a teacher one account, and a guest account. You're gonna click teacher one. The very first thing we're gonna do once we're into the panel is we're gonna bind our school Google Drive to the panel. So I'm going to, on the very bottom, I click the arrow, I'm now going to click Teacher One and select the cloud icon. You get the choice of binding your Google Drive or OneDrive. We're teachers, we all use Google, we're selecting Google Drive. Type in your school Google Drive account, so that is your initials and school ID. So I've got JN015647 at apps.matsuk12.us. Then enter your password. We are going to allow this to work with the board. This will pop up and that is showing that my school Google Drive is now bound to the board. That's step one. The next thing you're going to do is change that Teacher1 account to your name. So I selected the arrow. I'm going to click Teacher1 again. And this time I'm going to click the settings cog. Here I'm going to select the user that I'm logged into, Teacher1, and rename this. The district naming convention is going to be your last name. So teacher last name. Once I've got my name entered on the board, I'm going to go, I'm going to add a picture. And since I've tied my Google Drive to the account, I can take a picture right from my Google Drive. So I'm going to choose a photo from the gallery. I'm going to select my Google Drive. I have a folder called bio picture. Click my picture, click OK, allow. I can crop and reset that picture and click the check mark in the upper corner, click OK. And you'll see that not only does my picture change here, but now on my menu, my picture is there. So that's really step two. Next, I'm going to pin the board. So I can add a pin or password to the board. This is gonna be important because you don't want students to have access to your Google documents. So right now, anyone could come up, click your account and log in. We're gonna set a password for the board. It's really easy. We're gonna to go to that same location, which is right there where my picture is now. I'm gonna click the lock icon and I'm going to select screen lock and I can enter a pin which is a numerical uh, password or a password. I'm going to select pin and simply for this board 1111 don't enter your password as 1111 and I have to confirm that and I now have a password on my account. The very last thing before we get to the settings is students are gonna be able to screen share to the device and you can screen share to the device wirelessly. We want that to be a logical name so when they're looking for the board, it shows up in a list of devices. So we are gonna click the menu again and select screen share. And this will pop up. So this is where, this is the code to, to screen share to, but our panel name is right here. We're gonna change our panel name. And the standard convention that we'd like you to use for district panel names is your three digit school code. So right now I'm at Matsu Career Tech, so I'm going to use C, T, S, a dash, and your room number. And I am in room 1116. So CTS1116, good to go. And that panel is now named CTS1116. Finally, Lena is going to go over some of the basic settings that you might want to tweak that are going to make your life a little bit easier working with these panels. Hi, Matthew teachers. My name is Lena. Today I'm going to go over a couple of settings that are going to make your life a whole lot easier while using these panels in your classroom. Now, the first thing we want to do is look at some of the things that we do have. We have our pens. We have a wonderful, awesome eraser that also is magnetic. It can be put on the side of your panel as well. Cleaning your device, we have these little cloths right here that you can 
easily do a little bit of cleaning over here. We'll talk about cleaning at another point in a video. Just, we need to go over some settings to really make sure that these devices are not gonna do things that you don't want them to do, okay? So, we have an eraser, we have pens, we have this really great remote. Make sure that you keep these pens and tools kind of where you need to have them, all right? So, let's go over the buttons that are in front of your panel, okay? So, right out the gate, what we're gonna wanna do is press the volume button. Strange, right? So, the panel is on. We wanna press the power or the volume button because settings are gonna populate, right? So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is just make sure that our volume is set to about three quarters, maybe a little bit more. Same with brightness, same with contrast. We're gonna wanna make sure if palm mode or pen mode is off, we wanna make sure that both of those are on. So go ahead and turn those on. Then moving into settings, there's a lot of stuff in here that makes no sense to us, nor do we care. But there are some things that are really gonna be save time sensitive for you. So say like you're not working in your room, touching your board every five minutes, and it goes to sleep. We don't want that, right? So we're gonna to wanna to go through here, and in display, in display, we are gonna go through advanced. So we're gonna be advanced users right now, just for a short time, just one time, one time only. And what we're gonna do really quick is we are gonna do standby and t uh, sleep timers first. So in here, a standby timer means by standby, interact with the panel to turn it on again. So if it's really been a while, you wanna keep it on, keep it on for about an hour, as well as a sleep timer. You might wanna change that sleep timer to over an hour so if you don't touch your board while you're in the class, it doesn't go to sleep on you, right? You're like throwing something, it's like, what happened? Move that on up. And now I think we're bet better to go. I wouldn't move it anywhere past like an hour and a half though. An hour is pretty safe, like it there. So going on back, some of us, can I get that document camera from you, friend? John's gonna bring me your document camera. Some of you have these. Maybe it's not a document camera, maybe it's a video of some sort, DVD player, maybe another type of device that you wanna plug into this panel. Again, doesn't need to be a document camera, but something that you want to show on this board, hardwired in. So what you would want to do is you want to make sure that this is plugged in. However, we want to make sure that if sometimes you want your document camera to turn on when you plug it in, right? So if you plug in your VHS or your DVD player, you want to make sure that it just pops on, right? Right now, the panel's set at not. So if you plug this thing in, nothing would happen. So we want to make sure in source detection, we want it to turn to automatic. So if you plug something in, automatically, whatever you do plug in, is going to populate on that panel, okay? So there's our automatic. Going back out of that, we're gonna do power on default source. What does that mean? So power on default source means that when I turn the panel on or off, right? So I go to sleep, I go to bed, I wake up, I come back to school, what does it have on the screen? Is it the home screen? Or is it your document camera that you use all the time? Is it your DVD player? What is it? We wanna make sure that that input source is set correctly. So if you have your document camera, you like to use it, you go, you leave for school, then you come back the next day and you just wanna turn it on, there's your document camera. You need to make sure that it's set to last source. Okay, so the last source that it was on will jumpstart when the panel turns back on, right? Very simple. But unfortunately what it's set at right now is the home screen. So if that is something that you like, go ahead and keep it there. But these are some settings that are gonna be pretty essential to you in your future when you're adding other things or just kind of getting moving around in your classroom. John, I think that about covers it for my settings. Back to you. That's it for the initial setup of your brand new Active Panel. We are really excited about these devices. We think they bring a lot to the table and they're gonna change the way you deliver content in your class. There's a lot of opportunity for additional resources and professional development. We have live training that Promethean's gonna be doing this year, monthly office hours, as well as the Learn Promethean site has some incredible videos and certifications that you can take right now. So I recommend you check those out. And as always, if you have any additional questions, feel free to email our EdTech group at msd underscore edtech at matsuk12.us. Thanks.